said, Patricia, as you know, we are a $2 billion software company with aspirations of being $20 billion. And all the work you've done with our engineers and managers has been very well received. But we have the biggest challenge of your professional career. Our president lives in France, but he's going to be here next week, and we want you to work with him. Because we have 1,500 salespeople coming to the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas. 40% of them were acquired. They did not choose to work with us. And we need everyone to know you were working with the right company at the right time. Our strategy is sound. Now, our president is a wonderful man. He's not a bad speaker. He's an engineer, brilliant but shy and modest. And we are not a company that has any corporate rock stars. We want you to write him a speech, turn him into a rock star, and you got four hours. So he walked in, I said, how do you do? If you had one sentence rather than 45 minutes, what would you say? He said, this is a brand new company. I said, well, your opening line is welcome to a brand new company. Write that down. And as we are talking through his presentation, which is a great way you conversationally talk through what he's going to say in a logical order he were delivering it. And then he was talking about the strategy. And I said, Bernard, when was the first time you realized the importance of strategy. He said, I was a 14-year-old ball boy at the French Open. And when people were coming in to see the French Open, they didn't realize, first of all, they were going to be watching the ball boys have a match. And I was playing against my best friend. And we were equally good as far as our skill and experience was concerned. But in that case, his sister was our ball boy. And she wanted her brother to win. So she was sabotaging the way she threw the balls. So Patricia, I learned the importance of strategy when I was equally matched and at a disadvantage. Now he asked me the question, that most executives ask me. Do people really want to hear these personal stories? I said, yes. Because they will respect the position of president. However, they will fight in the streets for the person that they get to know who is behind the position. And then he was talking about corporate citizenship, which I realized was very important to him. But this was a point, had a high point in his speech. And the salespeople had donated $360,000 and the company had matched it. Rather than make a comment, I asked him a question. And he was talking about there'd been a tsunami and the salespeople had donated $360,000 thousand dollars and the company had matched it. So again, rather than make a comment, I asked him a question. Bernard, how do you explain corporate citizenship to your children? He said it was the day after Christmas and I sat both my children down and said, you are very lucky children. You have generous parents and even more generous grandparents. And perhaps you would like to take one of your gift certificates or one of your presents, give it back, and we'll return it and get the money and give to children who no longer have homes. And he said, I was so proud of my 14-year-old son. He said, Papa, how much do I give? Because I could give you all of my savings and all of my pocket money and all of my Christmas presents and it still wouldn't been enough to make a difference. So how much do I give? And Bernard said, 
I told him, oh, you never give it all. You just give enough that it hurts a little. So I would challenge you to think, how can you find ways to explain simple concepts to your teams? And it could be very much at look at how you would describe it to your children.